Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a beginner sewing machine video for you guys. So if you are new to using a sewing machine or you are learning how to use an industrial sewing machine, this video is for you guys. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys an exercise that I actually did my first day in fashion school in my ready to wear sewing class. And all it involves is a piece of paper and a marker. Okay guys, so I'm at my sewing machine. I already have my piece of paper drawn on, but this is basically what you are wanting to draw. So I have a spiral starting from the center and fanning out. And as you can see, I got squiggles and swirly lines and stuff. But basically you want to start with a pretty wide spiral. So that way you have more time to make these turns. Um, and then as it gets closer to the end and you feel more comfortable, you can do some squiggles and stuff. But basically you're just trying to sew as close or on this line as possible. And um, you're gonna want to use a needle that is dull if you have one. So like one that you've already been using for a while or whatever, because we're not gonna be using any thread or anything. We're not sewing at all. We're literally just gonna be poking holes in this with our needle. So if you already have a dull needle, that's great. If not, um, you go ahead and use a new one, but then set it aside whenever you go to start your new project, like with actual fabric. That way you aren't um, using an old needle on that. You always want to use a fresh needle on new projects. So I'm going to go ahead and start mine and show you guys what it looks like to do it. Okay guys, so for this exercise, I'm just going to be working with a regular straight stitch. Um, I know that all of you guys that have a sewing machine are going to have this stitch, but if you have other stitches that you want to practice with, feel free to do that as well. But for this exercise, we're just going to be doing a straight stitch. As you can see here, my needle doesn't have any thread in it. My machine's actually completely unthreaded and I don't have my bobbin inside of my bobbin case. So for this first exercise, we're actually going to be focusing on our sewing foot. Typically you would use the sewing guidelines here on the side, but in this case, um, because we're like top stitching, you're not gonna be able to see those guidelines. We're going to be focusing on the foot. We never wanna focus on our needle um, because it moves and so we won't be able to sew straight. So instead we focus on the foot or the lines. As you can see, my sewing foot has three markings depending on the position of my needle because I have that option on my machine. Um, but most machines, they're going to have some kind of marking to at least denote the center of the sewing foot, which is where your needle will line up to. And that's what we're going to be paying attention to right now while we're top stitching. We're not going to be fooling around with any back stitching or anything like that for this exercise. The whole point of this exercise is to get more precise at our sewing and to be able to sew around curves easily. So the very first thing that I like to do in starting whenever I'm trying to be extra precise is to lower my needle with the hand knob on the side of the machine to make sure that it is exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm going to move my fabric or paper in this case around until the line is lined up with the center of my sewing foot. And you can see it's lined up with the red mark on there. So after you get a few stitches in, you're going to realize that if it is a very tight curve, you're not going to be able to finagle the paper on your own. You're going to actually have to lift your presser foot up with your needle in the down position um, and actually physically turn your paper in order to get those tight curves. And we're going to continue doing this until we get to the end of the line we drew. Okay guys, so this is what mine ended up looking. I don't know if you can see the lines or the dots I mean here. I got some I got some spots that were off. I mean, but overall, not too shabby for filming with a camera in front of me. Um but yeah, so this is what um this is what we're looking at. So once uh once you're done, you can go ahead and take it off and see your handiwork. Okay, so the next part, we're just gonna sew using this as the edge like it's our fabric edge and this is where it's really more like we're sewing actual fabric and sewing those straight lines that we talked about earlier. Okay guys, so for the second exercise, we're going to treat it just like if we were sewing a seam and we're gonna line up the edge of our paper with our guidelines. So it doesn't matter which guideline you decide to go with. It's there's a little bit of variation in what guidelines are on which machines. Mine starts with a half an inch. Yours might start with a five eighths of an inch. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one and that's what we're going to line our paper up with. 
We're going to start this exercise out the same way as we did the last one by going slowly and using both of our hands to help guide the paper. And we're just going to be looking at the guidelines. You can completely ignore the foot and needle and just look at that guideline and making sure that your paper is lined up with it. If it gets a little bit off, that's okay. Just kind of guide your paper a little softly to get it lined back up again. Try not to manhandle it too much. So then we can just go ahead and move on and keep doing that until we feel confident in our stitching. So I'm just going to move my paper over to the one inch line of my sewing guides and start my next row. The purpose of this exercise is not just to be getting used to using your sewing guides, but it's also because you want to play around with the amount of pressure that you're putting on your foot pedal. In fashion school, I saw multiple people run over their fingers with a sewing machine because they did not have proper control over their foot pedal and they did not slow down in time. Yeah, not something that you want to happen to you. Forget the fact that it's going to hurt. You're going to end up bleeding on your fabric and that stuff's expensive. If you guys have any video suggestions or would like more of these beginner type videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I do try and make videos based off of you guys' suggestions, so if you guys are having a particular problem or an issue with something, just let me know and I will add it to my list. I do have some comments from you guys asking for very particular harder videos that I do plan on getting to. My current setup is not allowing me to do some types of videos, um, but they are on my list and I will be getting to them.